You're, you're, you're listening to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. We are live right now on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Thank you for joining us for the final show of 2020 for the Sports Hit List as we walk into 2020. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to all the fans for always uh, pulling up on Wednesdays at 4 o'clock. Uh, we got a lot of new things coming. Um, my wife is getting her own show. Uh, with the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, the B Show, which will launch on Thursdays at 5 o'clock. So if you think about it, the Sports Hit List will have three shows for the content weekly. Sunday NFL kickoff, which is kind of coming to an end because NFL season is kind of over. Then you have... We got, we got all seasons. Stop trying to get rid of us, Carl. <laughs> you, Stop you, trying you, to get rid of us. Wait a minute. You want to show on, on Sundays for kickoff no, with I, no NFL? No, I, no, I'm just saying. We got all season Sunday stuff to night talk baseball. about. You know what I mean? Carl always <laughs> trying to get rid of us, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Um, so we have the Sunday kickoff show, Wednesday's regular show, and Thursday's with my wife with uh, the Sports Hillers Presents the B Show. So um, I better again, be a guest you. on that. Oh, absolutely. We're, we were just talking about that, too. So thank you for all you the fans. The, uh, the uh, code on. <laughs> I, I know. I know. Thank you for uh, thank you to all the fans for joining us and liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing to all the Sports Hillers content. Uh, NFL Week 17, we're on the road to the final week. Uh, let me give you the Pickham's predictions. This will come down to it. Travis is in the lead right now with 143. Uh, okay, okay. So, again, winner gets $100 out of me. Um, Rick has 140. He wasn't an MVP candidate. Uh, uh, Rick has hey, wait, say, say that again? Say what again? was mine again? What was mine again? 143. Ooh, okay. Uh, Rick has 140. Ray has 139. Ooh, okay. And Paul has 133. Someone has to have a lopsided lose, lose out for in order for Paul to win. And Mac only leads you by two. Mac is winning one thirty-seven to one thirty-five. Those are those are all yeah, the standings I, right there. So one, uh, I need him on the show to explain some of these picks, yo. Because some of the ones, you know, last Sunday I thought was the week I was gonna jump ahead of that yeah, Cowboys Forty yeah. ers game. He picked the Cowboys out of nowhere. Yeah, I yeah, thought that yeah. was the week, and I was gonna jump him. Um, for those who don't know, let me introduce my panel. I didn't do that. I'm sorry. We have Chuck, Charlie. How you doing, sir? I'm doing pretty good, but I'm a little upset now, Carl, because not only am I not in the football chat, I was not part of this uh, of this pick 'em pool. That, that <laughs> Listen, is- you told me you couldn't do Sundays. Remember, you're working. No, so I-, I I can't, but I but but I can still sit here and pick games. <laughs> we have- I didn't know there was a hundred bucks on the line. I would have been the first one there. there is. Yeah, uh, that we got. Is- Go- like a yeah, Declan is in the building. Declan, how you doing, sir? Carl, thanks for having me. Wearing a jacket, As taking always. us back to studio days when we had to wear suits yeah, and shit, yeah, right? Yeah. Listen, <laughs> listen. According, according, according to your wife, uh, I got a little female fan club. I got, I got to keep them, keep them looking. That's why we brought out the jacket. <laughs> Last show for 2020. Uh, absolutely. You know, whatever. So, nah, you, my my girl, listen, my girl. Showing out the nah, wait, wait. Is 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 that the case, or are you preparing for what you think you an award you might get? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely not. No, wait, no. Though. Never that. Um, if and I we have Mr. Box Office. Mr. Box Office is here himself. How you doing, sir? I'm good, sir. I mean, last one for the year, man. Let's finish yeah. out strong. Um, again, thank you, gentlemen, for always pulling up on Wednesdays and helping me do the show. I couldn't do it without you. With that said, it's the time I give out the first award. Uh, and as he is on the panel, let me introduce the rookie of the year in the sports hit list, Mr. Declan Crockman. Declan, congratulations, man. What Thank kind of voting guys. is this? Well deserved. Well, well deserved. Yeah, listen, I, voted, I voted for Pete. I listen, voted for Pete. Listen, his people pulled up. I can't lie to you. His people pulled up to, to, to the voting. So uh, any thoughts as an acceptance speech as rookie of the year? Oh, wow. Acceptance speech? Uh, well, thank you, Carl, for bringing me on. I think I pulled up week three. That's why I wasn't in the pick em. Uh Thank you for everyone who supported the brand. Um, I will be a president for all people, those who voted for me and those who didn't. Wait, sorry, that was Joe Biden's speech. Um, <laughs> so I just want to thank everybody. We'll move on to uh, the rest of the awards in our Wednesday show. But seriously, it means the world to me. Thank you so much. I love being here, and I hope to be here for a very long time. Yeah, I will be announcing With the rest Chuck of the winners throughout, through, throughout the show. But Declan is our rookie of the year in the sports hit list. Uh, congratulations to Declan. Uh, with Thanks. that said, we have, so now when I introduce you, you will be introduced as Rookie of the Year, if that's okay with you. Wow. Um, that's fine. With that said, <laughs> gentlemen, we, that. Have a, we have a playoff race to get to. Um, I'm going to go down and you guys tell me who's making it. It's really, it, it's, it's really not going to be as cutthroat as we thought it would be. Um, let's start with the AFC West. The Chiefs, Titans, 
are actually tied for first place right now. You got the Steelers and the Bills. And I guess outside looking in, based upon um, – because there's a tie, I guess, um, holding the tiebreaker, you got outside looking in the Ravens, the Browns, and the Colts, all at 10-5. and five. Uh, Chuck, who gets in here? Um, I think the team that's going to be left on the outside looking in is probably the Colts. I think the Ravens are going to beat the Bengals. I think um, – the Titan and uh, not the Titan. Yeah, the Titans are gonna win. I think the Dolphins are gonna win because the Bills are probably gonna start to rest their guys in the second half. And I think the Browns are gonna win because the Steelers are gonna be resting Ben and a bunch of other guys also. So if so you got the Browns, wins, Colts, and Titans. Yeah, well, if everybody wins, I think he's gonna win. The Colts lose out on the tiebreaker, so I think they're gonna be on the outside looking in. So I think the wild card teams are going to be um, Ravens, Browns, and uh, Dolphins. Ravens, Browns, and Dolphins, right. Okay. Um, uh, Travis, what do you think here? Man, from the looks of it, I might have to go the same as Chuck, man. Uh, the Colts, they might – I mean, they're playing the Jaguars, which is going to be an easy W for them. But uh, like like he said, Bills are probably going to rest players. Bengals uh, – the Ravens are on a hot streak, right? hot streak right now. I think the Ravens are the team that nobody wants to face in the playoffs. So they're going to get this W against the Bengals. And then I think it's all on the Browns, man. Uh, the Browns have got – this is this is the time for the Browns right here. They've had a good season, all right? They've, they've – we've seen that the organization has made a turn. But this is the time right now where you got to go out there and show that you belong right here, man. They got to get that W against the Steelers, which I would assume they would. I mean, the Steelers are going to be resting some players. So if that's the case, I think the Colts are the odd man out, man, which is sad because they're on, they're one of the better teams in the NFL, which is nuts. To sit here and think that one of the better teams in the NFL won't make the playoffs. Okay, so, who, so, so you got the Ravens, Dolphins, and the Browns? As it is right now, yeah. Dolphins, so the Ravens, Colts don't make it? Yeah, Colts are odd man out, I think. Okay. Declan, what are your thoughts here for the AFC West? Wow. Um, it's definitely going to be tough. So – AFC West, or you said AFC race. Yeah, AFC sorry, race, the wild card. The, the, the wild card. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry about that. Right, right, right. No, no worries. Um, so I think it'll be interesting to see kind of who gets in, who doesn't get in. I think the only thing that concerns me, um, in that could potentially be in favor of the Colts, um, is that the Titans are playing the Texans. So division matchup that could be tough, but I think the Titans will have that on lock. Um, the on a couple of things. So I'm really not sure because I feel like out of the Dolphins, Browns, uh, Ravens, and Colts, I feel like the team that doesn't deserve it the most is the Ravens, and I would start with their inconsistent passing. However, their defense is top five, and they've really come alive to, down the stretch. So they may deserve to get in in terms of they'll probably play the. I think what are they? The Bengals this weekend. Uh, the Bengals have been hot, so that could be could see a potential upset there. But I think that John Harbaugh is a great coach and that he'll play to get those guys to win. And their running game, their scheme is excellent. So they should sneak their way into the playoffs. Um, does this mean the Colts don't get in? We shall see. The Browns last week lost to a team like the Jets. I know they had guys on COVID, but uh, COVID protocol. But now that, what, makes me, what makes us think that the Browns are going to beat a Steeler team with, led by Mason Rudolph? It's a Mason Rudolph revenge game. Hopefully he's not seeing three miles Garrett coming at him. He's only seeing one. <laughs> Hopefully his head's healed by now. Um, I'm actually going to go with the Browns as the odd man out. It's a little bit of a hot take, um, but I could definitely see a scenario where Mason Rudolph goes in and, and, and beats them. All right. Ricardo is joining us on the road. Be safe, bro. I uh, hope you're enjoying the beautiful weather. Uh, I just gave our rookie of the year, but I also um, give out a special award that wasn't on the ballot to the comeback player of the year and Mr. Ricardo <laughs> uh, He's been lobbying for the award. He deserves it. He's been pulling up on Wednesdays. He's pulled up. To, um, to our Mount Rushmore, making it a groundbreaking series in his shenanigans. Um, cutting promos with Ray Jarvis and the NWO. We can't forget that. So comeback member of the year goes to Ricardo Etienne, the cousin. Congratulations, sir. Hey, I appreciate that, man. I got to say, I, I, I got to thank you and the whole uh, Sports Hit List fam for that one. Um, I'll be completely honest, being a part of the group, I know uh, initially I was, I, I kind of was involved a bit, but then not as heavy. And then pandemic rolled around and all the beautiful things y'all was doing with the group, man. It kept me engaged. It, I wanted to be a part of it more this year. And I did my very best to kind of really jump in more just because of everything y'all was throwing out there. It was just so dope. And I was just like, man, 
I need to make sure I stick with it. So uh, that's the reason I'm here is because y'all keep putting out dope content, dope ideas, and I just want to be a part of it. So I appreciate it, man. Thank you, sir. So now we were just talking about the AFC wild card. I know you got your Dolphins up there to make the wild card. Um, who doesn't make it in? Again, it's a it's a tight race right now. The Titans are tied with the Ravens, the Browns, the Colts, and your Dolphins. So who makes it in and who doesn't? Yeah, man. I mean, you you already know. I'm I'm hoping uh possible MVP candidate uh Josh Allen definitely don't play on Sunday. Make sure we get that dub, you know. So um, but I'm gonna have to agree with Declan here. I think you know the Browns. I I, I think I have them kind of stumbling. Um, they they dealt. They're dealing with a really bad case of uh, bad luck at the worst time. I mean, everybody's kind of had their little tidbits with the whole COVID thing, and they're getting hit with it right now at the end of the season where they need a win, and you could find them in a situation where they lose these last two games of the season because of this mild COVID outbreak. That They're, they're trying to not call it an outbreak um, in Cleveland, but... You know, they had some other people within that organization test positive today, you know, so we still got a few more a few more days before game day. Who knows what's going to happen with that team from a COVID perspective? So it sucks because so many of these teams have gotten their fair share of COVID issues throughout the season. But here come the Browns who need, you know, just a win to kind of get up into these playoffs for the first time in forever. And the last two weeks, they're going to deal with this COVID situation, which could possibly have them close out the season by missing the playoffs. So um, I think they're going to be the odd man out. I can't remember who made the point about the Colts. Uh, if they were to miss the playoffs, how, how much of a travesty it would be. I absolutely agree. I think that's a team that they get into the playoffs. They're going to be super dangerous. So for them to not get in, it's going to suck. Some really, really good teams that can really be viable in these playoffs. And one of them, unfortunately, going to have to be on the couch just like, just like us, you know? Um, so, Declan, you said uh, a key term that I'm a little bit confused about. You said deserve to make the playoffs. Do, 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 do we consider that like, like if a team has the record to make it, should they not make it? Do we go by if they deserve or not? I mean, I think you said the team doesn't deserve to make it. Right. How do you explain the word deserve when it comes to making the playoffs? Well, I'm happy to go to school here. Uh, and define the word. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Please, please do. Uh, no. Nah. Um, <laughs> well, here, here's what I'm looking at. First of all, I think in the AFC, it's loaded with talent. Uh, these are teams that are playoff caliber teams. I know if the Colts, if everybody wins this weekend and the Colts go 11 and five and miss the playoffs, I think they're just like either third team in NFL history or third, like most recent in the Super Bowl era. I know obviously the Matt Castle led Patriots in 08. Another team, if you guys can help me out in the comments section, I'm um, blanking on that right now. Um, but in terms of deserving, like, first of all, before I even say that, to piggyback off Rick's point and why I took the Browns is, 2020 in the NFL, we've, I feel like we've seen it all. We've seen all the upsets, all the unfavorable wins, unfavorable matchups, and they somehow pull it out. Why should we expect that every team in the hunt right now is going to win every game? Like, like yeah. do we think the Colts are going to win? The Ravens are going to win. The Browns are going to win. The Dolphins are going to win. All these teams are going to win. Like, it almost seems like, like the NFL doesn't operate on how what should happen. It operates on what happens. And that's why I think the Browns will miss. But – I mean, it could go either way, but that's where I'm That's where I'm leaning now. In terms of deserving, I think that the Browns are a better football team than the Ravens. I think Rick hit on it with that the Browns have had bad luck. Yes, so have the Ravens, but the Browns are now having it at a way worse time. I think with the Ravens is that their defense has come alive late in the early early parts of the year. It looked good. That was a strength of the team, but they weren't getting any help from the offense. Um, after that, starting with that Steeler game, I believe it was week, week eight. Uh, when Lamar Jackson fumbled twice and threw two picks. Um, sloppy quarterback play, inconsistent passing is the biggest flaw of this team. But I do think John Harbaugh has done a great job to get the running game and the running scheme going with multiple guys, whether it be J.K. Dobbins, Mark Ingram, if he can get healthy, their fullback. They do some nice design runs with their receivers from the slot on the jet sweeps and everything. Uh, and even Lamar Jackson running is, is one of the best running quarterbacks this game has ever seen. Um, so that's where I stand there. I think that the Browns are a better football team. I think they have a better quarterback. Uh, in terms of this season, I think that they have a better line uh, when healthy, but not at the moment. Uh, and I think their receivers when healthy are, are far better than the Browns, but I do think the Ravens have a defensive edge. So if we want to say that the, that the Ravens deserve it more, I won't necessarily go after you for that. But I think most of the good teams the Ravens have played this year, they've choked in clutch situations. But the Browns game was a three-point game. So, I mean, 
It's close okay. in that regard. Let me, let, me let, me ju- let me jump in on that real fast. <laughs> oh, you you can't, you can't, I didn't realize how long it. I just took with that. This is gonna oh, be bad. right because you can't. You came at listen, the Ravens. Every, <laughs> listen, listen. If you go two minutes, that means Travis got to go ten. So that means you got to kill right. one. You know what I mean? You, you know, it's, you know, it's called, it's called balance. balance. You know? Crown a new oh, rookie my. of the year by the oh, time. Oh, Weekly balance, like everything should. You know, hurry up, please. Go ahead. Um. You came at the Ravens right there, and I'm telling you, the Ravens right now are one of the teams nobody wants to face in the playoffs. But Lamar Jackson has been a little bit on the hot streak the past month or so. Uh, past four games, he's had a quarterback rating of over 100, which is a great rating for quarterback, man. So I'm telling you, I think you're wrong on that one. The Ravens are right I now, do. they're, do- they're doing what you want to do in football. You want to be playing your best football in December towards the end yeah. of the season. And right yeah. now – Which is what team, I said. I said that they got hot and their defense is top five. But, but it's not It's not just the defense. Lamar, Lamar Jackson has been balling out the past month or so as well. And I'm telling you right now, they get – the Ravens are a lot – of the team that are, a lot of people are trying to avoid this year because you because coming in there with that – I will that agree. Potent, My dad's been potent, saying that all week. That potent offensive attack right there, there's somebody a lot of teams want to avoid, man. So I'm telling you, watch out for them. I All agree right, so with you. Just, Carl, can I get something in really quick? Real fast. I got to move on Lamar to the NFC. Has, Go ahead. Lamar has, Lamar has been good, but I will say it's been mostly in the running game. He's playing off the pass. They're not making him play Q. They're having him run. He's throwing the ball 14 times a game on occasion, uh, which inconsistent passing will be what haunts them. Um, but I agree, though. Defensively, you don't want to face them in the playoffs. And their run scheme as a whole is John Harbaugh. is another level. And the Jets' new head coach might be on that Baltimore Ravens staff. So watch out. All right. Moving along to the NFC East, Chuck, we have uh, – it's pretty tight in the NFC as well. The Dallas Cowboys and Washington Red, Washington football team are tied for first place in, in that division. Whoa. And, and Whoa. then you have And then you have the Rams, Bucks, Bears, and the Cards uh, outside looking in. Um, first off in the, uh, in the NFC East, who makes it? Um, it's tough, man. And it's tough because you know, the Redskins need to win to get in if they lose their out and it would be so Redskins, just like how it would be so Browns to lose the game and miss the playoffs. But I think if Alex Smith plays quarterback, I think the football team will win because Alex Smith has been there before. He's a crafty veteran and he will make sure that this team does what it does what it needs to do in order to pull out the victory. And I really like the, uh, the football team's defense. It's so weird to say football team, but it's, it's, they have a great front seven, probably one of the best in the NFL. And I think they're going to get the hurts and they're going to force them to make a couple of turnovers. And I think that'll be the difference in the game. And it's a Sunday night game. So I think Alex Smith will know how to handle the pressure, and I think the football team pulls it out. All right, Rick, do you agree here, or do you have the Cowgirls making it? <laughs> yeah, so I, I agree to to the extent that if, if Alex Smith is under center, I think the Washington football team is going to win that game and go in. One thing I will say, I got to give credit to the NFL, man. Give credit to the NFL big time for what they did with the schedule on Sunday. They brought us the, they brought us the playoffs a week early. Because you essentially that um that that Dallas and Giants game during the day is a playoff game because the loser definitely goes home. So now the winner essentially asserts themselves in the place of the Eagles, rooting for the Eagles, which you know is now the next playoff game at the end of the night because the winner there either Washington wins and and they go through or the Eagles win and the winner of that previous game goes through. So um, I like what the NFL did there, considering this is a division that, you know, four or five weeks ago, if we said their game is going to be flexed to be the last game of the, of the regular season, we'd be like, why, <laughs> you know? So uh, shout out to the NFL for uh, pulling out some pretty solid drama out of a division that we all had pegged as the absolute worst not too long ago. So you got Washington though, making it. I got Washington winning, yeah. If if Alex Smith's on the Senate, if Alex Smith ain't playing, then the winner the winner of uh, Cowboys Giants is going is going through for sure. Okay, so Declan and Trav, do you guys uh, agree with the panel making the sweep that Washington makes the playoffs? Is that safe to say? Uh, Go ahead, <clears throat> like, oh uh, yeah, if everybody says pretty much uh, if Alex Smith plays, I'm going to go with Washington, but. If Alex Smith doesn't play, at the end of the day, I'm going to go Giants on this one, man. I think they beat the Cowboys, and I think they get that playoff spot if Alex Smith doesn't play and Washington loses. Uh, to me, the more interesting battle is probably that Rams and Cardinals spot. One second. I'm right. going to get to you on that. Hold that. Okay, De- Declan, who do you, Declan, who you got here for the NFC East? 
Uh, listen, I've been going back and forth on this all week. I know you guys probably expect me to take the Giants, but I'll give them a little. Obviously, we know the path to victory. Uh, I do think that they'll beat the Cowboys. I think that they put – well, I know that they put 34 points up against them last time uh, when the Giants defense wasn't good, gave up 37. Now the Giants defense has had hit a bit of a cold streak the past two weeks, but otherwise has been pretty good. Um, and I, I do expect them to stop Dallas, and I, I actually expect the Giants to come out with it. But, you know, Joe Judge, elimination game, trying to make a name. Let's get this thing going. I, I expect more. Um, I, and I think we will get more. I think we'll get a win from da- uh, from the Giants against Dallas there and continue the domination of week 17 or meaningful games, I should say, uh, against the Cowboys going in the Giants' favor. Uh, the thing that I'll say about Washington Eagles, it's going to come down to a lot of factors. Obviously, you guys mentioned Alex Smith. I think the only thing that concerns me about Washington from a Washington perspective, not from a Giants perspective, um, is that if Alex Smith does come back, uh, obviously we know the injury history with him. We saw Daniel Jones get rusty after missing one week. He looked very bad. Alex Smith has since missed two weeks uh, of football after he has missed a lot of time over the past couple he years. He missed almost two injury. years. I think he's good. <laughs> not, not the point. That's, you, would, you would think that that would even itself out. But here's the thing. He's got his legs on go. Now they take a little bit of a break. And now you come back, it might be a little weird for him. So I am worried in the cold weather in Philly on a Sunday night game in December, January for that matter, we could see some more weird stuff happen. That's the only thing. On the other hand, for the Eagles, Hertz has said he has a sore, uh, or I guess the coaching staff and the medical staff in Philly has said that Hertz has a sore calf. So his legs might be a little groggy, hoping for the Giants' sake that he's uh, he's ready to go and he's looking like vintage Jalen Hurts from the couple, last couple weeks. Um, we don't want Carson Wentz starting that game. Uh, but I do think that the Giants can pull off pull it off here. I'm not going to go fully. It's it's a little bit of an in-between. I think that Washington would be the safe bet. What the hell? I'm going to have to roll my G-men for one last time. Hopefully not one last time, but likely one last time. So not that's not something you're going to discuss at the breakfast table on Sunday, right? You already got your decision made up. <laughs> oh, no. You know what? <laughs> I will. I will. No, I, listen, Carl, by the time we have our next show, it's going to be next year. You know how many times I'm going to change my mind on this? I ordered a round table for the breakfast table just for 2021. <laughs> We're going to I got a new, up. Yeah, I got a whole new table for uh, it. The giant you may, turn you three, may have gave me a new segment. You may have gave me a new segment idea. Uh, the breakfast table with the sports hitlers. I don't know, man. May something coming soon. I don't know. What's the round it? table. You're right. Um, but uh, no, nah, that's all Ray Jarvis over there. That's the wrap round table. That's for Ray Jarvis. But um. The rest of the NFC, uh, um, Travis, I cut you off earlier. What were you saying? Who do you have making it in and who doesn't make it? This is going to be an interesting race because you got the Rams and the Cardinals playing each other, and then you got the Bears and the Packers playing each other. I think the pack the Packers are trying to keep that number one seed because they wanted to come through Lambeau. I think That's last cool. Sunday we, we seen why they wanted to come through Lambeau. And plus they're playing the Bears, which is one of the oldest rivalries in the NFL. So therefore mm-hmm. they're going to want to put the Bears out the playoffs. So I think they play to win that game. And if they lose, it doesn't really matter what happens with the Rams and Cardinals games because I think both of them get in if the Bears take the L. So I think at the end of the day, the Rams and Cardinals are going to get into it. The Cardinals right now are on the bubble. They're in the eighth spot on the outside looking in. But I think they get in because the Bears are going to take the L. All right. Um, Chuck, what do you think here? Um, I think Travis might be a little wrong. I think the Cardinals need to win. And if both teams lose, then the Bears get in. I think. I could be wrong I'm, about I'm try- that. I'm trying to sit here and look at scenarios now. Like this, I, this so like- in the meantime, um, Rams and Cardinals is going to be a battle of backup quarterbacks, which is kind of like a throw-up matchup. But I don't think the Cardinals could win. I think the Rams are a better team, especially if both teams have their backup quarterbacks going. So I think the Rams are going to give the Cardinals a loss. And I agree with Travis about the Packers and the Bears. I think Rodgers is going to put the exclamation point of, on an MVP season. This was his re- revenge tour. Uh, he's going to wrap up the regular season by killing the Bears, securing the number one seed, and then get, get ready for the playoffs. So I think the Bears get in because the Cardinals lose. Okay. So he's right Bears about he, he, he's, he's right about that. If the Cardinals lose, they're out. Yeah, the Cardinals are okay. out. Okay. Kyler so, Murray just announced that he is playing. Oof. Okay, Oof. so okay, so Rams, Bucks, and Bears. Rick, are you uh, going with that? Uh, so, so one thing I will say for me, like the same rule that I pretty much applied to the AFC wild card situation, where regardless of what team gets left out, where you know it's it's a bad 
it's a bad loss. But, you know, like that's a team that can kind of go in there and do something. So I'm looking at these teams, even down to the Bears, who, you know, again, like we like we would say about the NFC East a few weeks ago, we was clowning the Bears a few weeks ago. And right now, Mitch got that offense looking right. You know, they're cooking. The defense is, is, is playing like they should be. And they look like a really good team. So, again, the same logic goes there. I'm focusing on that. West specifically, because I know that's the division uh, way back during the summer when we were doing our previews that I was really high on. Um, I personally would love to see both of those teams get in because I think at their best, uh, fully with, with, with everybody healthy and all the talent top to bottom, the Rams and the Cardinals are two teams I would love to see go into these playoffs and make some noise. So, you know, I agree that the Packers are definitely going to come out there and look to cook the Bears. And if that's the case, if the Cardinals can get the dub, then I, based on the scenarios, it seems like the Cardinals and the Rams would go in. So that's that's what I would like to see personally. So hopefully that's uh, that's how it ends up. I don't think I want to see the Bears as great as the Bears have looked the past couple of weeks. I don't think I really want to see them in the playoffs. All right. Uh, is it still too early to make Super Bowl predictions or are we going to wait a little bit longer? Yeah, yeah we, we, yeah, we got to wait on that one. Yeah, let's wait. Let's <laughs> wait. We, don't, we don't even know who's fully in yet. We yeah, got to yeah, wait yeah. on that. Okay, all you right. Well, I mean? well, you know what? Um, Travis says we don't get enough football, but just like we did, I'm a man of fairness. You know, I love to be fair. So just like the NBA received some post games uh, uh, for for, for – uh, there's the NFL will receive post games just as fair as well. I know those will be spicy and, and just think about oh, it yeah. for sure. So again, I, as a man of my word, the NFL will get some post game lives following some key football games. Not sure if we'll do it for wild card week, but it's something that we'll discuss with the NFL panel and see what people's availability are. And we will deliver some post games live. Definitely be interesting to see how we go about doing those shows. So um, thank you guys for joining me again. Let me announce uh, next week, Rick, you're trailing by three, my guy. You're trailing know, by man. three, man. So, last week was rough, yo. Yeah, last week was a <laughs> it's rough not, week, not, man. It's not know. how you start. It's how you finish. How you finish. Yeah. It's a rough week. So, again, <laughs> Travis is in the lead right now at 143. Rick is at 140. Ray is at 139. Paul is at 133. And Mac leads Travis 137 to 135. Those are our final two uh, uh, pickums over there. Um, again, guys, thank you so much. We oh, have our – Oh, can I just say one more thing? Go ahead, sir. Sorry to cut you off. I just want to thank you, Carl. Uh, another year came to an end. You did. Nice. You went beyond this year with COVID and everything. Uh, obviously, we couldn't go into the studio. So you wrapped us all up on Zoom and you produced, you know, a hell of a content. This is like my fifth year, I think, with the hit list. So thank you for this. Thank, thank you, you for man. sharing with all of us. Absolutely, Thanks, man. You guys are like family. Call, call. Before you take your flowers, before you take your flowers, I, I just want to, I, I need to come back on and piggyback on that. Absolutely. What you was able to do this year on the fly, like you called a quick audible, it seemed like on a random afternoon, did one Zoom, Omaha. and then we just took off, man. Like, it yeah. was, I mean, it, it was too dope, bro. Like, kudos to you, man. You the real MVP straight up, bro. Thank you, man. I appreciate Good job, media love, man. I, I, I definitely appreciate you guys. Declan, you had one more thing you want to say. I know you want to talk about something before we go. I know you had sense oh. of Yes. Yes. I spoke to Travis about this as well. Uh, I figured that, you know, it is obviously since we talked about the Washington football team a lot, I thought the topic of the conversation uh, of Dwayne Haskins would, would have been a uh, – a nice way to kind of, I don't necessarily not wrap up the show. I didn't know it would be now, but it, talk about the <laughs> show in general. Um, but yeah, if anybody, I know Travis has uh, felt passionately about this. I just want to say a couple of things on behalf of Dwayne Haskins. Well, not on behalf of Dwayne Haskins, on the topic of Dwayne Haskins. Um, I want to say that I, it is, a, it's upsetting that, you know, a guy who was taken in the fifth, in the first round, 15th overall, uh, is out of a job so early in his career. Um, and while I do think that he brought that upon himself for the most part, uh, his quote where he says, I need to get my life together, uh, is kind of upsetting to see from a football and a human standpoint. So I want to send him well wishes. I hope that he gets everything together. Uh, I was particularly bothered. I think a lot of us were uh, that he was maskless at a strip club when his head coach is recovering from cancer uh, and is finally in remission, I believe. Um, so that was upsetting. But I really hope Dwayne Haskins gets his life together. The Booger made some interesting comments. Uh, Booger McFarlane, I never thought I would say that, but he did. Uh, but I wanted to shout out Dwayne Haskins. Hope he, hope everything uh, turns out well for him. 
uh, and he gets his life back on track, uh, aside from football, if that's what he feels like needs to happen. But I just want to send my well wishes. Uh, thank you, guys. Out. Again, I can't thank you guys enough. If you want, I can announce another award. We got a few more to do give it. out. Do so, it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I got another <laughs> one. Uh, most annoying, most annoying goes to Brandon Falco. Brandon oh, Falco is most God. annoying hitless <laughs> member. I'll send him a quick text. I'll see if he'll reply back. But the most annoying hitless <laughs> member goes to Brandon Falco. So shout out to him and all his hard work. Even though he's annoying, he definitely did show up uh, yeah. by starting his own show and producing his own content. Um, nothing makes me yeah, happy. Yeah, Chuck and I on yesterday. Yeah, so yeah. He, he definitely does a great job. Um, he's also on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. So I consider it another win when another hit, when another person from the hit list gets their own show uh, on the network. So definitely shout out to him for winning Most Annoying. Um, best Debater. Best debater goes out to Eric Siegel. He wins that award. Oh, so, yeah, that's a that's that's definitely for him. well best deserved. Debater. Best okay. debater for him well to win well that. So, uh, that. That's all I'm going to give out for now. I'm going to give out more later on in the show uh, as I wait for my NBA team to come on. But you guys take care, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Carl, happy New Year, pal. Happy New Year. Can I just ask one question? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, how does it? How does this go? We're announcing the. Uh, I'm gonna watch this, obviously. We're announcing the rest of the awards. Uh, oh my yes. God. During the rest of the show, I will. Oh yeah. my so throughout God. the rest of the show, I'll announce the rest right, of the I'm so we excited. Got, we got a couple shout more awards to, to give out. To Eric. Shout out to Eric. He writes ten page essays on the Steelers every week. He doesn't give up. I think people know that yeah, he's he good. Man. Go hard, I'm so happy. I voted for him. Yeah, I'm so happy. yeah. He doesn't give up. <laughs> but I will say this though, Declan, you had some of your people show up in, in the ballot. So shout out to you, man. Because yeah, I think I have my girl. I think I have my mom. Who was it? The Cougars. The, my... the Cougars. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't the Cougars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Rick, listen up, man. Listen, Deb's getting her own show on Thursdays, and Declan's like he's got to get on there for the ladies. He's already. Yo, he's got first time. First guest, yo. He got to be on the first really? guest. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. All right, guys. I'll talk to you guys soon, for sure. All right, guys. Uh, later, fellas. Right, Happy New later. Year, everybody. Happy New Year, everybody. All right. As I wait for my NBA team to come in, I don't know where they are. Uh, let me send them Late, a quick Late, always. Terrible. Late. Terrible. I don't know where terrible. they are, guys. Terrible. Here, terrible. How about those Knicks, Carl? What about oh, those Knicks? Oh, now you're a Knicks. Oh, now you're a Knicks, oh, now you're a Knicks fan all of a sudden? Is that Ziggy? Hello? That is Ziggy. That is Ziggy. Ziggy in the what did you do, kid? Oh, what's going on, Chuck? What's going on, y'all? Yo, Dad, congratulations, boy. I mean, I ain't voting. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Congratulations. That's all right. Appreciate you anyway. <laughs> Later, guys. Hey, it's Take LeBron's care. birthday. Falco better get a nice little tribute to him or something. We'll see about that. But uh, co-founder of the Sports List, my guy Ziggy Zig is in the building. What's up, sir? How you doing, man? Yo, chilling, man. Chilling. I just came from outside. It's Freezing outside. I haven't man. been out in two days, brother. I've been saying I've been home, man. Ain't nowhere to go. So I've been chilling, man. <laughs> since I seen you last on uh Sunday. I've been chilling home. But uh this is how it started, man. Me, you, and Chris, right? It's just Yo, me that's and you amazing, the hit list. Yeah, it's a crazy <laughs> how far we've come in this journey. For those who don't know, we started the hit list back in 2008 out of the small college of big dreams, known as St. Francis College. It was just uh an idea. I figured if I couldn't be on the SPN, let me start something with my friends. I asked Ziggy Zig, I asked Chris Cash if they wanted to do it. Here we are a few years, uh, 12 years later, and we are live on the platform. Who knows where this is going to take us uh, this new decade. But thank you for being along with me uh, for the journey, Ziggy Zig. Definitely appreciate you, my brother. I love you. And uh, thanks again, man. I, I, I couldn't be here without your help and your and, and your motivation. Nah, me. man, listen, it's, it's been a run. I know we had, like, of course, a few pauses um, due to different life circumstances or whatever. But I'm just glad to be able to keep it going with you. And as another member joins on, he's coming in right now. We got Mike on the on the ones and twos coming in. So it's just good to just be along for the ride, you know, being in the studio. And as Charlie said, you know, you calling that audible and making that transition to doing it, um, doing the Zooms uh, since we're in this pandemic right now. You know, you know, it's crazy. I can't take I can't even take all the credit for it. I, I'm just trying to figure out when the studio got shut down back in March. I'm saying to myself, how am I going to do this, yo? I'm, I'm like, how are we going to do these shows? Yeah. And I just made a promise. And it was one of the wrestling contributors. He said, you know, you could record Zooms. And, mm. and WrestleMania was coming up. And I was like, are you sure? He was like, yeah, just record it and post it later. And I was like, all right, cool. So we did the WrestleMania show. And I was like, aha. The light bulb went off like, ding. Well, call that thing. man's name out, man. Get that man <laughs> oh, Zach Drow. Zach Drow. Oh, Zach, Zach. Okay, yeah, okay. Zach Drow said, yeah. you know, just do a Zoom. And I was like, all right, let me try it. And I tried it. And it ended up working out. So uh, shout out to him for, for, for definitely doing it. And um, Anthony, are you in the building, sir? Is Anthony here? Mike, are yo, you here, sir? Me. Yeah, that's me, yo. Oh, so you double syncing over here for us? 
Yo, man, my yo, my audio is so crazy on my computer. I don't know what happened. I'm blaming my friend for it. Uh-huh. All right. All right. Cool. Cool. That's me right there, man. All right. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. So before we get going, um, between this Anthony, this Anthony Davis and Lamarcus Aldridge, which Zig, I had you pull up so you could just be here for the I'm so observer for that. I'm just so observer for that. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. The NBA season is about a week in. I'll be totally honest. I I took a hiatus. I've been binge watching, you know, just just my corny shows. I haven't been paying attention to the league. I, I don't know. You're still sad. Seventeen. I I don't know what it is, but I'm just not into it. Like Mike's texting me about the game last night, and I'm like, I didn't even watch it. I'm not into it. I don't know what it is yet. Maybe I will get into it soon, but I haven't been my NBA self. Uh, so you guys fill me in. What's been going on in the league? What's been people to watch? I know the Nets. All you league. need to know is that this year the Lakers is about to get 18. It's over for that Bumston having the most tips and all of that. And, yeah, that's all you need to know. Well, I'm going to start off with something that's a little bit more, you know what I mean, to the to your question, Carl. <laughs> you know, the Washington Wizards have been very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. I don't know what's going on. Russell Westbrook is coming out. He's getting triple doubles all – all three games he's played, he's gotten a triple double. But all three games, they've lost. So I don't know what's going on down there with Scotty Brooks and the team right now. Um, Bradley Beal, he seems to be in and out of it right now. It's just really weird to see what's going on with Washington. Um, on the other side, the Knicks. They've been a bad team. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, they, they, they are a bad team. But the Knicks, on the other hand, they have been very surprising. And I'm going to give credit to the man who I probably didn't even want as the coach um, and Tom Thibodeau because – Yes, again, it's early in the season, but Julius Randle is doing something that I never thought he would do, and that's be selfless. Like, he's out here, he's passing the ball, he's swinging it on the perimeter, had 15, 7, and 7 before um, halftime, and ended up with a triple-double. I mean, be it, albeit, you know, they beat the, Cle- uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers, they also did a good job beating the Milwaukee Bucks, so that's been pretty dope. But all in all, the season's just been very short. Uh, we just need to get some more time in. You know, I'm always going to be paying attention to the Lakers, the Nets, the Clippers. We saw what happened to Kawhi Leonard. Um, that was pretty tough. Come home. And come home. <laughs> you know what? Zig, I did else. tell you to be. I did tell you guys. I, I like. I like what the Knicks are doing. If they keep their young core and they keep their pieces together, they definitely will be a threat. I mean, towards the bottom of the conference. So I, yeah. I think if they keep yeah. it together, they could do that. But Mike, what have you seen so far in the young season? Man, I, I don't know what the Knicks are doing. I ain't gonna lie, Zig. When we played when we played y'all, I was like, I was looking at the lineup. I'm like, I don't understand the I really was scratching my head, like, so what is exactly the direction? Where 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 are you guys going in terms of personnel? Like I don't know what kind of play it just seems like a mashup of players. It really does to me. It doesn't seem like there's any type of cohesion with the players. But so that was that was my biggest thing. So yeah, what what is what do you guys like? What is what do you see the goal of, so, of the team and what they're yeah, trying to do? So, yeah, yeah. So you got to keep in mind too, right? They're coming, they're dealing with two different regimes, right? So there's going to be players from the old regime. You got players in the new regime. So yeah, as you said, it looks like a bunch of players that's just meshed together. Who's just trying to figure it out yeah. right now? But as we give Tom Thibodeau more time, we'll see what happens. I don't really see Julius Randle staying there long, especially if he keeps playing like this. They may look to ship him out and probably bring something in in terms of a draft pick maybe because this this upcoming draft is going to be pretty tough. It's going to be better than last year's draft. So I see the direction. The main thing is get our young guys involved. R.J. Barrett's been playing. Kevin Knox's been coming off the bench. He's been playing. Um, Obi Toppin has been hurt, and Emmanuel quickly was hurt, but he dropped 25 before he went down, um, the rookie that we drafted. So we're, we're, we're getting the young guys in. We're going to get them playing. We're going to get them going. And like I said, Carl said, they got the bottom of the conference, right? But – as Joel and B showed yeah. us with the Philadelphia Philadelphia 76ers, you know, trust the process. If the Knicks follow that Golden State Warrior route, follow that San Antonio Spurs route. Matter of fact, if they just be a smart effing team, you know what I mean, just for once, then who knows what could possibly happen. All right, cool. Uh, let, me give our, let, let, let me give our one more award here. We got the biggest beef. <laughs> biggest beef in the sports hit list goes to uh, myself and Greg Polius. That beef goes beyond nice. 20 years. So we know that. Over there. Huh? Oh, is it outside of the dirty macking that he did? Or, or <laughs> like, it's still, no, it, it starts it, with that. It, it starts with that. It goes way back with me and Greg. Um, they call us the dirty mac. Not, not me. <laughs> yeah. You would have. Um, 
And the yeah. other award that everyone wanted me to give out that wasn't on the ballot is the biggest bozo of the year. We know who that award goes to for something that happened two weeks ago on the show. Uh, the biggest oh, bozo goes, yeah. to, goes to Paula Kesey for the biggest. Just look in the dictionary and look up bozo. His face is just right there. <laughs> yeah, so um, again, our rookie of the year goes out to Declan, best debater Eric Siegel, most annoying Brandon Falco. Uh, biggest beef goes to Carlin Gregg. Um, bozo of the year goes to um, Paula Kesey. And comeback player goes to Rick. <laughs> Ricardo ATN. But today's special segment, uh, Mike Miller hit me up like, Carl, we got to do this segment. I was like, all right, I never turned down the segment. So I hit up Anthony. Um, but before we begin today, um, Anthony himself edited some footage, Mike, and he and he wanted me to play it before we get into the topic of today's hand. So he did it on so Again, the media man had nothing to do with this. I did not book this segment. Anthony edited his right. features and he wanted I to recap you. Your Anthony Davis over the last few Big, weeks. So I'm going to play it for I everybody. Movie. And then <laughs> iMovie, shout out to him for doing iMovie. So I'm going to play that clip for everyone with sound for everybody to listen to it. And then you guys can tell me what your thoughts are as we recap Mike's Miller on Anthony Davis, LaMarcus Aldridge, and this. So we don't get nothing twisted. <laughs> okay. Give me one second as I share my screen for everybody to listen to. Uh, here's the first clip. The video too? I want got a video, video, yeah. Got yeah. a video. Yeah. Take that play. All right, here we go, guys. Here we go. Where is that team? Where, where, where is that team at that given moment? So if you took Anthony Davis off the, the, the Pelicans. Where are they? Okay, here's the answer. With Anthony Davis, they're not a playoff team. Without Anthony Davis, they're not a playoff team. So who cares? <laughs> who cares? That's not true. Right. They can still make it. Yeah. Are they in the playoff? If the playoff started today, would they make it? It doesn't We're start today. About- Speaking of that talent, what you have to ask yourself as a GM is how much are you willing to give up for that talent? That's what this comes down to. Toronto was only willing to part ways with DeMar DeRozan because they were getting a finals MVP. That's the reason. Anthony Davis right now is a great talent. He's not a great player. Let's be clear. He's a very good, talented player, but he's more Kevin Love on the Wolves than he is Tim Duncan. That's just, right. just as of now, that's that. We gotta be fair. He's he scores a lot of points. He gets a lot of rebounds. He plays incredible defense. But you're not necessarily going to win any playoff series. Well, last year when he won his first playoff series, but for the most part, you're going to end up in the lottery every year. This year, they were but, on the track. You know, it, it'll be interesting, but in that conversation, someone brought up, like, <laughs> that AD is like Giannis or like LeBron has a Giannis. He has AD. And it got back into this, what what seems to be a long-standing conversation about where you rank Anthony Davis amongst the great players. And I maintain that Anthony Davis is a great talent, but I don't know if Anthony Davis is a great player. He was in New Orleans for seven years and made the playoffs. He missed the playoffs uh, five of the seven years he was there. He got swept in the first round once and then lost in the second round uh, once. <coughs> but overall... Anthony Davis has shown us, and what it made me think about is that there are actually tiers in the NBA. So you have your superstars. These are the top tier. The superstars would be LeBron, KD, Stephen Curry, and I guess we could throw in Kawhi Leonard. These are the dudes that you're going to win championships with. If they're healthy, you have a great chance to win a championship. That's that top tier. Then you have this second layer. That's your Damian Lillard, James Harden, James Harden, and you could throw in Giannis. These are the guys that are going to knock on the door a lot. They're going to get real close, but you're, but the odds of you actually winning are really slim to none. You're probably not going to win the championship, but you'll be close. That's that tier. And then you have another tier under that. These are the your, these are your LaMarcus Aldridge, uh, DeMar DeRozan's to some degree. And I believe we could put Anthony Davis there even though he's a tick lower. LaMarcus Aldridge is the type of guy you're always going to go to the playoffs, but nobody has zero faith that you're going to win a championship. Give me one second. There's one more. A tick lower. There's one more. There's one more. 
I said, even though he hold on, hold on, Mike, 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 hold on one second. Hold on, we got one more piece of evidence. Give me one second. Here we go. We got more evidence, yo. This is great, yo. And I appreciate you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Shoe already dropped. AD is with the Lakers. Since we're talking about LeBron and the Lakers, the LaFlop that was on the shirt faded. I was just watching the video earlier. The LaFlop oh, uh, wow. faded. But since we're talking about them, I had to dig that up, that shirt up. So, um, while everybody's, I mean, it's crazy for the drama of the NBA. But, like, let's talk basketball for a second. Um, because we've been talking about AD to the Lakers for, like, a year. And I haven't really heard anyone make a <laughs> basketball reason why that's good. I mean, the chatty patty is, like, you hear big names and you get excited. But, like, from a basketball standpoint, I was never that excited about it. Like, everybody would say, oh, if they get AD, is over. They could beat the Warriors. Even this is when the Warriors were healthy. I was like... How? Like, you're not telling me a basketball reason. You're just saying it's two names, so they just automatically, well, that means something. So let's just start with AD and LeBron. How do we know that's a good uh, match? If we look at the history of LeBron James playing with dominant power forwards, which one of them played good with with him? Chris Bosh basically had to – Chris Bosh diminished most of his production – Playing with LeBron. Okay. So, Mike, there goes all the of his... receipts. And you know in the Hitler streets, we have so much archival footage. Again, I did not prompt him. I, you, you said you wanted to talk about it, and he put he had it ready to go. Uh-oh. So, Mike, what do you have to say for yourself? Yo, I appreciate everything he just posted because I agree with everything that I said. I was looking for all of I was looking for those videos. Where are the lies? Give me some, Anthony. Where are the lies? Oh, 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 wait. Can we start there? Where are the lies? Let's start, let's start with the first lie. Remember back in 2015? Remember when you told me that uh, with, with Anthony Davis, they're not in the playoffs? And without Anthony Davis, they're in the playoffs? What, no, actually, hold on. I'm sorry. What year was that? That wasn't 2015. That was 2018, wasn't it? It was a fact. When, they, when I said it, it was a fact. It Say it again? You were saying that he was an MVP. His team was not in the playoffs. That was a fact. At the moment, did his team make the playoffs that year? When we, what did you ask the question? The I video. Did, no, what the question did I ask? Did his team make the playoffs that year? What was the question? See, you can't do. See, Amp, we have to no. actually. Think no. The question is, at that point, was Anthony Davis? He, we said who was the MVP. Being MVP has nothing to do with you saying with them they're not in the playoffs and without them they're not in the playoffs. They were not a playoff team. With Anthony Davis, they're a playoff team. Without Anthony Davis, they're not a playoff team. That was a fact. No, but you no, you said with him they're not a playoff team. You said without him they're not a playoff team, and they made the playoffs. So what are you talking about? Give the people the context because at that point Anthony Davis had missed games. So we said right. when Anthony Davis, plays, they're bad. When Anthony Davis plays, they're bad. At that's that not point, what you said. Not- Don't see. That's why I got the video because that's not what you said. Don't spin it now. Don't spin it now. The okay. exact thing so that you wait, said. Me, okay. Okay. So let me ask this though: Isn't what Mike said when he was on the Pelicans and not on the Lakers? Is that a fair assessment to ask or no? No. What do you mean? Why not? He's on two different teams now. He's in two different situations. I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about that year that he said that Anthony Davis made the playoffs. And not only did he make the playoffs, he beat Portland that – well, his team beat Portland that year. And they, they didn't beat uh, Portland in 20 – they beat him in 2018 with Anthony Davis playing? Was it 18? Was it 18 or what year? This is what you have to do. What? You, you, have to, you have to stick to what you do. What you do is that? you don't – you don't deal with facts. You deal with your opinion. I, you I, I, I deal that. with only facts. That's your problem. That's your problem. I deal with only facts. I deal with only. Did he not make the playoffs? No, it don't even matter. If he, it, don't, it don't even matter if it's the year that he beat Damian Lillard. The fact is, he made the playoffs, and you said that he wouldn't make the playoffs. You said that they wouldn't Bro, make the playoffs. 2018. 2018. 2018. They made Bro, the playoffs, right? Bro, 
Bro, you didn't even watch and listen to your own clip. We were talking about at that point in the season who is right. the MVP. Everybody on no. the panel told you. Don't try to don't see you spinning. You spinning. You said that he's not. No, you were saying that he's not the MVP because basically, again, you because you you feel that one player can. No, you feel that one player can be the all be all to a team. So you felt that basically because they weren't in the playoffs that he wasn't good enough to be MVP, and they still ended up making the playoffs that year. That's what I'm talking about. And that was in the middle of the season. Carl asked everyone who would be their MVP right now. And everyone on the panel told you, you counting AD, his team is not in the playoffs. That was at a that moment. At that moment. Just like I told you. Did I not say they still make the playoffs? Yeah. And they did not make the playoffs after I said that? Wait, time out. To give some people some say that. Look, hold on. The 2015 clip was from 2015 where they didn't. Did I not say the they can make the playoffs? I said it in the clip. I said they can still make the playoffs. And all you want to be focused on is, oh, they're not in the playoffs right now. But you know what? That's not even what I'm here for. That's not what I'm here for. It's cool. It's cool. Let's get in. Let's get into. Let's get into Lamarcus Aldridge. Let's let's get into Lamarcus. Aldridge. He's a tick under Lamarcus Aldridge. I said they were in the same stature, even though you I think see, look, changing it, it again. Oh. Changing it again. Play the video. You said a tick under. You said a tick under. Let's get into Lamarcus Aldridge. Please do it. Okay, cool. Talk, now, now, you you was talking about all these playoffs that Lamarcus Aldridge made, right? Again, look at the teams that he was with when he, when he was on Portland. Who did he play with? That wasn't the Marcus Aldridge team. That was Brandon Roy's team. Okay, he was who, going to... who got picked higher? They was in the same draft. Who got picked? Hey, that's makes it even worse. He took his team, and he wasn't even a higher pick. He was, who was the leading pick? He took his team. What do you mean? Who's the who was the leading scorer? Brandon Roy. Brandon, Brandon Roy. Brandon Roy. It was Brandon Roy. Thank you. Thank you for proving my point. Now, hold on. Let's go down. They, 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 let's go down. They, when they was winning 50 games and all that, when, when Brandon Roy got injured and stuff like that, they went from winning what? 50 games to now 48. And that's when they had Travis Outlaw, Wesley Matthews, and Batum and all of them. A good team. A good team. Okay, when them, when them guys wasn't there, what happened? 2012, the man won 28 games with, with Portland. What happened? Yes. And, they, and, and, and because they won 28 games, guess what happened? They was able to draft Damian Lillard. Once they drafted Damian Lillard, that's when they started going back to the playoffs. That's when they started. No, bad. What did you know about Damian Lillard before he got drafted? What does that mean? What did, what did you know about Kobe before he got drafted? What the fuck? What does that mean? What does that mean? Let me Stop with the spinning. I'm not with the spinning. You cannot spin me. You cannot spin me. You cannot spin me. Let me give him an example. You cannot spin me. What was he before he was? Let me give you an example that will, that will help you understand this. Go ahead. So, Kobe gets drafted to the Lakers. Shaq doesn't make the playoffs. Does Kobe? Does Shaq benefit from Kobe, or does Kobe benefit from Shaq? They we benefit from each other. Uh, how they, what, how, so Shaq made Kobe Kobe. So Shaq made Kobe Kobe. He makes him better. My Shaq was in the club and Kobe was in the gym. Shaq made Kobe Kobe. That's what you're saying. Did he make him better? Of, what Kobe made Kobe better. No Wait. player makes another player better. Yeah, yeah, I do not subscribe to that. I do I'm not. So, he was not shooting why, in the okay, gym with Kobe. Okay, okay, okay. So Anthony, why are we here? I'm still trying to establish. Again, no. Now. Hold on. Let me finish. <laughs> let me finish. Let me finish. Because no, I'm I just stopped there. I did, again, this is this is because he he had the nerve to put Lamarcus Aldridge in the same sentence as Anthony Davis. So again, now he's talking about all of these playoffs. Again, they drive Dame. Because they won 28 games with LaMarcus Aldridge. And after drafting game, that's when they started winning the game. And then what happened? Right. Now, huh? That's why. He got, Dane got drafted to a team with an all-star. And Dane was an all-star, so he needed another all-star. He was an all-star when he came in the league? No, you don't, you don't automatically be an all-star when you come in the league. 
But when you well, come with all that nice. Dame was Dame was scoring. They was averaging the same amount. What are you talking about? Dame's averaging his rookie year and Lamarcus Aldridge's fifth year in the league. Yes, yes, the win, yes, yes. That's why he took over. No, wait. Now listen. Now we get in. No, wait. Now we get into the good part. This is the part why he left Portland. He left Portland because of that very reason. Because Dame was, it was Dame's team, and he was getting all the shine. So then where he goes? He goes over to where? The Spurs. The well oiled machine Spurs. Who have been in the playoffs for the last 100 years. The Spurs have been in the playoffs since the NBA has been created. Okay? You talking about all, and it wasn't even his team. Kawhi was there. Something? You left something out, bro. Why I left out? So in 2015 or 2014 in the playoffs, do you know what happened in those playoffs? Besides they lost, what happened? In the Portland Trailblazers in the first round against Houston. Do you know what happened? Besides they didn't get far. Tell me what happened. What happened? What happened? They didn't get far. What happened? No, please. So remember when we talk about playoffs, right? And playoff performance and playoff. I'm glad you just went there. Yes. So mm -hmm. in 2014, where was um, Anthony Davis that year? In 2014. 2014, what was he doing? Oh, the rookie Anthony doing? Davis, what was he doing? He was the rookie was Anthony Davis who got drafted to a 21, a 20 something win team who didn't have a Brandon Roy, who didn't have another all star in Damian and then Damian yeah. Willard. The 20, hold on, no, that's what you want to talk about? I help you. You didn't know. Okay, so in 2014. I just told you. They weren't in the playoff. He was a rookie on a bad team. Go ahead. Go ahead. Lamarcus Aldridge averaged nine points his rookie year. Lamarcus Aldridge didn't nope. make the playoffs his rookie year. So why should Anthony Davis make the playoffs his rookie year? 2014. Stay on topic. 2014 playoffs. Why, should, why should Anthony Davis make his, the playoffs his rookie year when Lamarcus Aldridge was yeah. averaging nine? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That's a topic. Okay. You're talking okay. about working in. Yeah. Okay, one second, guys. Ray, Ray, Ray Jarvis in the building. I got breaking news. Ray Jarvis. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Let him talk. No, let him talk. No, no, let him talk. Go ahead, Mike. His audio. Go ahead, Mike. Audio. So in the 2014 first round, right? Anthony right. Davis was a player in 50 years to score at least 89 points through the first two games. That bum. He had 46 and 18, 43 and 10 through the first two games against Houston in 2014. That bum that I dared to compare LaMarcus Aldridge to averaged 30 in that series, 30 and 11 in that series. Guess what happened that offseason when that Anthony Davis became a free agent? Guess who was begging him to come to their team? You like that shirt, right? right. Go ahead, Ray. What did you I'm just say? You just said a bunch of nothing. <laughs> what did you just say? You didn't even say anything. Listen, let me finish. Hold on, wait. Stop it. Stop it. Let me, let me, you, just, you just prolonged it. Stop it. Stop it. Okay, now. Now let's go to... You're talking about, you're talking about highs. No, you're talking about highs. What's, what's, what's LaMarcus... What, what is LaMarcus Aldridge? What's the most... He, matter of fact, no, I ain't even going to go to that. Let's go now to Anthony Davis. Oh, no. Again... Anthony Davis made the playoffs with Eric Gordon, with um Gordon, uh Evans, uh a hurt Drew Holiday, who wasn't even in the playoffs or whatever the case may be. A bad team, like I said, he had no all star ever. Then finally, and again in 2016, uh both Gordon and Evans got hurt. Then 2017, we got Boogie. Guess what? But he got he got Boogie. Boogie only played 17 games. Drew Holiday 60 games. Still, what happened? Okay, 2018, Boogie, Boogie Hurt. They still made the playoffs, and they still beat Portland with Boogie Hurt. Okay? Now, th that's his playoff run, and then he goes to the Lakers and win championships. We, we know we know that. Now, let's go to – how long has LaMarcus you, – you said this too. LaMarcus Aldridge been in the league. How long? Right now? Oh, yeah. right at the time? No, right now. Right now. He's been in the league 11 years. No, 11, no, years. 11 years and he's a seven time all star, right? Yeah. How long has Anthony Davis been in the league? 2012, eight years. Eight years and he's a seven time all star, also. Why? 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 Why?
Do you remember the league when he matches him in all star selections? Do you remember what Carl asked you? He said, no. Why are you talking about Anthony Davis on the Lakers? That comment was made before he went on the Lakers. So we're talking about Anthony Davis. No, 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 no. When you said he was a tick lower, when you said he was a tick lower, that was still recent. On the Lakers yet. He was no, on the Lakers. Hold on, so he was on the Lakers seven years, so he was an all-star because he was on the Lakers? He was on the Lakers for seven years, is that what you just said? What I'm saying to you is that, here's my point, uh-huh. and I'll let Ray go. I went to you uh, with the tears, and I explained the tears very clearly. No, but I, I asked you a question. Why does he only Anthony have seven time finish. all-star? Anthony, let him finish. Anthony, let him He's finish. not saying nothing. Kevin Love made millions of all-star games. Did you ever think he was a top five player, ever? Mm-hmm. Did you? Say that again? Kevin Love made three back-to-back all-star games. He was averaging, he was getting 30 and 30, averaging 26 and 14. Did you ever think he was a top five player? No, what is so? I'm asking a question, yes or no? Did I ever think he was what, top five player? No. Did you ever think he was a top five player? No. And I'm pretty sure I know why. Here's why. So I, there's a basic criteria for when we call guys superstars or really great players. One of the things is they're 20 point per game scorers. And throughout history, we always measure players on if they can lead their team to the playoffs. Mac was trying to explain that to you in the last segment. Oh, when, when I just think- told you that Anthony Davis did that. And even on a team with LeBron, he led a team with LeBron. He led a team he with did- LeBron. Sound. He led a team with LeBron. He led a team with check the check check the check the data. Check the data. Check the data. Check the data. I know you probably wasn't watching. Check the data. Okay, 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 okay. Can we get job in here now? Yeah, yeah, okay. No, we can't. No, we can't. Not yet. Because I gotta get to this one thing. He's talking about a guy. What was his max average? 23 points in the in a in a regular season. What was Anthony Davis's? 28 points. What about the playoffs for LaMarcus Aldridge? 26 points. What about Anthony Davis? 31 points. Regular season. What's the most regular regular season? Regular season again. What's the most LaMarcus Aldridge has ever averaged? 11. Two. What's the most uh, Anthony Davis has ever averaged? 12. That that that, that accounts to more. Okay. okay, um, okay. What about no? Stop. Stop. What about blocks? 1.6. 1.6 is the most your man LaMarcus Aldridge could do. Guess what? 2.9 leading the league for Anthony Davis. Three block, three time block champion. Okay, let's go to the playoffs again. 31. Let's go. How many rebounds has he ever had? Um, the most rebounds he's averaged in the playoffs. 13. You want to know what's cute about uh, Lamarcus Aldridge's 2.6 uh, blocks in the playoffs? The only reason that it wasn't uh the leading uh. Average is because Anthony Davis was averaging three blocks in those playoffs. Now again, and you talk about uh, oh no no, and then you talk about all star and superstar and all of that. What 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 guy you know has made five all NBA teams? Four of them has been the third team. One of them has been the second. He's never even been a first team selection. Anthony Davis is a four time first team selection. Also four time. Defense selection, which uh, I don't even think Lamarcus Aldridge has one of those. There's no comparison. I don't know why you even brought him up. I don't know why you did this to yourself. But you brought okay. this on yourself. Now, now make excuses. Up. Okay, okay, hold on one second. Let me get to Ray Jarvis before I let you guys continue. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, as I was trying to announce it before. Crazy. I want to know. I, okay, talk I was trying to announce it before, but you guys have been going on. <laughs> Congratulations to Ray Jarvis, who is the official 2020 Hitless MVP. Oh. Ray Jarvis, go your flowers. Oh. A day before his birthday. So uh, happy early birthday to Ray Jarvis. MVP. Tomorrow's his birthday, the last day of Appreciate the year. It. And you have been not an MVP of the Hitless. Do you have any comments to that before we get to the debate? Uh, you know, I, I just want to thank everyone who voted. I, I, I want to thank everyone who was entertained by what we tried to do as a conglomerate in 2020 with everything that took place with the pandemic. We were able to entertain, inform, and have fun. And, and Carl, I just want to say right here on this platform that you inspire me every day, Carl. I just <laughs> wanted to tell you that. I just wanted to tell you that. I know we, we, win. 
Oh, inspiration is high around here. Me to be the best version I can be. Inspiration is high around here. I could have texted you that, Carl, but I wanted to say it for everyone to see. I know where that is going. Yeah, thank you, but Ray Jarvis, real talk. Though, if I had to compare myself to someone who kept me uh, on my toes, it had to be Ray Jarvis, and, and I can't uh, thank him and appreciate him, and I love him for doing that. And I tell my wife every day, I'm like, man, me and Ray Jarvis really do great work together. So. Uh, thank you for being in the group and being so active and us together just putting out great content. It is amazing. Absolutely, but, absolutely. Um, to this debate, I'm still trying to figure out why we're here. I see both points. Anthony yeah. is calling out Mike. There is no Mike. other point. Can Stop I finish? Him. Stop cutting I'm me sorry. off, man. I'm Damn. Sorry. Can I'm I finish sorry. now? Thank you. I see Anthony's point about Mike's comments about Anthony Davis. Um, but I also see Mike's points. Mike made his points when Anthony Davis was on the Pelicans. So I believe Mike was comparing... Anthony Davis on the Pelicans and LaMarcus Chargers on the Portland Trailblazers before they went to two new teams. Anthony's point is, Mike, so when Anthony Davis got traded, Mike made some comments about how LeBron was going to diminish uh, his big man career, and we didn't see that. So, again, I see and he said, And he said that he's still a tick lower than LaMarcus Aldridge. I don't think he did, but you're going to say that. But uh, uh, Ray Jobs, what, 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 what do you say? What, what, what do you think here? Listen, listen, listen. You know, Mike, I love you, bro. You, you the homie. We, we, we've done this many times. But Mikey, bad take struck again, bro. You can't, you can't do that here, bro. Like there's, there's no, there's no feasible comparison to Lamarcus Aldridge and Anthony Davis. There's generational talent, and then there's really good. There's, there's levels, bro. That's, that's it. AD's generational. Bro, I understood that. I said the talent. I've always said AD is a great talent, but I also talked. I also talked about the production, particularly when it means the playoffs, and that's why I always use Kevin Love as a barometer. Before yeah, Kevin Love goes, but AD, but AD did more than Kevin Love did as a solo act off the rip. Thank He's you. done more than Lamarcus did, did as a solo act oh. off the rip. But wait, Kevin Love was getting thirty and thirty. Did he make that the playoffs? Been- uh, no, but this is a, right? That's my point. But Anthony Davis did. Anthony Davis was putting his numbers up and making the playoffs. How can you compare it? He swept That's the right. team that he swept the team that was a three seed, bro. He swept Dame out of the playoffs. But Ray, Without Ray, notice what notice yeah, what you just you, did, bro. Right, 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 right. You, but you know what? To Mike's point. I think what Mike's trying to say is. LaMarcus Aldridge made the playoffs five times with mm-hmm. the Trailblazers compared to Anthony Davis, who made it two times. He That's wasn't it. the leader of those teams. Right. He said leading. I he wasn't that. the leader of those teams. And Gay recognizes Gay. Good. But, however, Anthony Davis never had a Brandon Roy or a Dame Lillard. What are we doing here? Fair point, too. Right. Real, real quick, Ray. The only, only thing that I'm saying to that point of is that it's, it's, it's like the Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen argument. Like, people, people make it seem like Scottie Pippen was this great player before Michael Jordan, when Michael Jordan was already great. So if Scottie Pippen gets drafted by the Bulls and plays with Michael Jordan, that helps Scottie Pippen, just like when I said Kobe and Shaq. If Shaq is already there, Kobe comes on that team, that makes Kobe better, that helps Kobe. So if Brandon Roy and LaMarcus Aldridge are drafted at the same time, they help mm-hmm. each other. If it- Lillard gets drafted to a team with an established all-star like LaMarcus Aldridge, that helps Damian Lillard as he comes into the NBA. LaMarcus Aldridge was the best player on Portland when Damian Lillard got drafted. And if Damian Lillard played... And that that didn't last long. Exactly. What about the the first three years? What about the first three years he went to the playoffs? Who was the leader? Absolutely. It, it didn't last long. All right, so look. <clears throat> so let me ask you this. If, if, if LaMarcus is what you say he is, what happened when he got to San Antonio? Yeah, yeah. They didn't make, they didn't make the playoffs last year. This is what I'm saying. And this is why Carl illustrated that point. I never said that LaMarcus Aldridge is going to be greater than Anthony Davis forever. I said at that point, in terms uh, of production... Uh, Numbers from okay, AD. So, Mike, so Mike, so Mike, at no let me point he was ever a tick lower okay, than so the Marcus Mike, Aldridge. So, Mike, no so Mike, so Mike, so, 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 Mike, so, so, Mike, let me ask you this. What's your thoughts of Anthony Davis now? What, what is he, a second tier, a third tier? Where do you put him, first tier, second, or third? We saw what he did in the playoffs. He moves up. That's how everybody, that's second, how the NBA okay, works. So first to second, first to second tier. First to second tier. <laughs> 
Get him in the second. We may move him to first. It depends. He got a lead. We saw him get 13 the other day. That's typical NB Davis. LeBron got a carry. He get 13. So that's what I'm saying. We, we he, wasn't watching, see, he wasn't watching last year. Oh, see, he wow. wasn't watching last year. I told you. Did I tell you? He wasn't watching last year. I told oh, you. Wow. I told you. I told you. you, you but Ray, you know what it is? A lot of people will make that point. A lot of people in the hit list streets have made that point that because Anthony Davis played with LeBron, this is why we're seeing this version of Anthony Davis. That's what mm. that's what the argument is. He's that. the same player. Check his stats. I mean, he's the same player. I mean, he's had to sacrifice certain parts of his game to play with LeBron. So some yeah. nights it might not look the same. But but again, throughout the last throughout last season, Anthony Davis was the goods in the postseason. <laughs> Anthony no, Davis, no, what's no, the no. What are we doing? Yo, why are we acting like I'm, I'm going to die on the hill of Lamarcus Aldridge? Bro, that wasn't the case. I was just saying at that point, and it was here's the main context. The context was we were saying, people keep saying Anthony Davis is a top five player. How, at that point, when Steph, KD, James Harden, Giannis, all of these people are leading their own teams in deep playoff runs, Anthony Davis can't make the playoffs. How is he? You he was making the playoffs. Stop time. saying that. When he made the playoffs, stop saying that. He only, changed the NBA. He, he only made the playoffs two times. So that's that. that that's that's making the playoffs. That's okay. not okay. not making the playoffs in okay. zero time. Okay. 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 All right. Remember, if you want to say, if you want to say he wasn't perennially making the playoffs and he didn't deserve the right. top the top five status, so we'll, we'll hedge it then. He was a top five talent who was still finding his way in the league when he was playing with garbage talent surrounding him. It doesn't matter. That's what you, play, you could be top five, whatever. If the talent is trash, how are you supposed to win in the West? He's not in the Eastern Conference. He's in the West. Ray, that's what I was – remember, every single Anthony Davis video that you probably see me in, you always see me preface with saying he's a great, great, great talent. I never denied his talent. But what I said was you can't put him in the top five players when KD, Steph, LeBron, James Harden, every year they're leading their team so far, creating and, and putting their teams in position to win championships. I gave right. the context. Right. Gave those teams. With better teams. Okay. With better teams. Stop right. acting like it's just them. Okay, guys. Okay, we have to wrap up here. But Ziggy Zig, final thoughts as we close out the show for the year. Final thoughts here as we as as, as we wrap up. Listen, man. Um, this whole debate. In all honesty, it was just pure comedy for me because I've always been on the side that AD is mountains better than uh, Lamarcus Aldridge, right? Mountains. But with all that, um, it's been an amazing year. I'm looking forward to next year. Jarv, um, we already knew Jarv had that shit in the bag since the summertime. It's from one floss guard to the next floss guard. So mm. congrats to Jarv on that MVP. And um, that's that, man. I hope all, all your families as well. And let's keep it going. Mike, final thoughts on this AD debate as we put it to rest, finally, in 2020. We ain't going to put it to rest. Ant is a human troll. He going to keep doing this to me forever and ever. That's my brother. I love him. I love you. You. <laughs> you know how we do Shout out to my guy, Ray. I, well deserved, brother. I know you the MVP. You holding it down. Yo, shout out to everybody. Yo, yo we ain't going to see each other until the next uh, New Year's is going to be coming. Probably. New Year. Yo, everybody stay safe. God bless, man. This was fun, man. And you know how we do. All the time, <laughs> All right. baby. No. Anthony, final thoughts. Are, are, are you finally putting this uh, LaMarcus Aldridge, Anthony Davis to rest? I will. That's all I needed to hear was that he finally took Anthony Davis' name out the mud. He took that smut off of Anthony Davis' jacket. He finally added, added him. I will accept tier two. Even though I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm ready to argue that, but we got to go. I will accept tier two. I <laughs> okay. will accept it. And, and, and we will slap box again, my brother, because you know I love this. All you right. Um, and uh, Ray Jarvis, you had two final points you wanted to make about sports. Since you're the MVP, I'm giving you the floor last. I know you had two uh, NFL point and an NBA point. Go for it, sir. Uh, shout out to the homie Paul Lawson, winner circle. We couldn't do it to end the year, but I'm going to try to do the best to hold it down. Um, I know everyone knows that Haskins, the quarterback, former quarterback of the football team, is not very good. But my issue with this whole thing is we've spent decades watching sports. We've seen plenty of first-round quarterbacks who were not good, higher pick quarterbacks who were not good, get shown more respect than Haskins. You know, you don't you don't release a guy before the season is over. You know, I haven't seen that before. I didn't see Ryan Leaf get tossed out the front door. You know what I mean? That year when uh, – 
I forget his name. He was drafted by the Dolphins. He got benched. The kid from UCLA. He got benched. He wasn't kicked out unceremoniously before the season was over. So why is it okay for a quarterback who was never given a fair shake to now be tossed out the front door, not even the back door? They didn't even try to sneak him out. They kicked him out for the whole hood to see. Why is it okay for that to happen to a black, a black quarterback? Why does a black quarterback have to be meteoric in order to be shown respect? Why can't average black quarterbacks be shown the, the respect of, of a Nate Peterman or one of these guys? That's you know the issue that I'm having here. I'm not saying it's a black or white issue. What I'm saying is, is that if, there, if it was a white quarterback, he would have been cut sometime in the offseason, and we wouldn't even have noticed when it happened. For them to do this after a Week 16 game when he's had two coaches who didn't care for him, he wasn't placed in a system to be successful. He was drafted by an owner who wanted him, but no one else wanted him. I see the same thing with Jameis Winston. They ra- they they rather give a quarterback who couldn't throw the ball a chance to start over Jameis, who's proven that he could play at the NFL level. Granted, he's not super super gifted at the NFL level, but he was better than what the Saints had, and they chose a running quarterback over Jameis. So it's like, unless you're spectacular like a Mahomes, like a Watson, l- 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 like my, my man in uh, – uh, what is his name again? Lamar Jackson. Lamar. You can't – if you can't be spectacular, why can't you be Reggie and be okay? That's my question. Why does every same black old, quarterback same have to be spectacular to get love? Now, we know in society, we understand that. A black person has to be spectacular, period, to get love. But it's getting ridiculous now. It's really ridiculous. They could have released him right after week 17, literally the Monday, Black Monday. They could have released him, and I wouldn't have said a word, Okay. But we got a guy like Daniel Jones right here playing for the New York Giants who right. can't throw the ball properly, and he's getting chance after chance. I got to listen to white fans mm-hmm. tell me he's good because he can run. Have we seen Daniel Jones extend plays, or do we see Daniel Jones have scheduled runs or scripted runs, not runs where he's in the pocket and he creates offense? We, we don't see that. So I don't want to hear about running. He's not special, and he's getting chance after chance. They push Eli Manning, the world champion, out the door to give this Reggie quarterback a chance, and a guy in the same draft class as him gets pushed out after week 16. That is utterly ridiculous. To the NBA, long story short, Anthony's here. He's going to try to cut me off, but let me be great. Actually, Carl, can you mute Anthony before I start? Because I'm not about to get cut off. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. I'm getting tired of looking on the internet and seeing some of the worst possible basketball takes that involve Steph Curry. All of a sudden, Steph Curry can't lead teams. All of a sudden, Steph Curry did nothing before KD got there. All of a sudden, Steph Curry has to prove something to Joe Pumper. Yeah. What, what mm-hmm. was Steph Curry doing before before Steve Kerr making the playoffs? Mm-hmm. Didn't Steph Curry have a 50-game, 50 50-win 50 season prior to any championship? Yes, he did. Didn't Steph Curry get out of the first round in the Western Conference playing in an ISO-based offense with Clay Thompson? Yes, he did. Did did he have any any first-team All-NBA teammates when he was doing these things? No, he didn't. Did he have a first-team All-NBA teammate when he won the championship? No, he didn't. So for people to tell me that Steph Curry needs to prove something to them in 2020-2021 is extremely ridiculous. The man is a champion. We saw on the court, they say he's not clutch. There's there's a 10-minute video on YouTube right now of Steph Curry doing clutch things. So that's utterly ridiculous. So this is the thing that kills me is that these, these NBA fans who, who instead of watching the sports hit list, instead of listening to the gray area, will listen to first take and, and undisputed tell them that Steph Curry isn't all these things when he's done it already. Steph Curry's better than all your favorites because he's done it already. Guys like Westbrook need to do it. Guys like CP3 need to do it. I see guys talk about Trey Young and pulled up Trey Young and say Steph Curry's not this, but Trey Young hasn't done anything. 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 <laughs> So, again, I am sick and tired. I am utterly sick and tired of all of you NBA fans who claim to know the game. Come on here and argue that Anthony Davis didn't have help, but they will laugh at Steph Curry, who was playing with bums two days ago, and say that he has to prove something. You NBA fans are utterly ridiculous. You make no sense. And let me be clear. In 2021, do not talk to me. Don't tag me. Don't try to ask me for a debate. Don't try to waste my time. I don't have no time for you. If you don't have time to think for yourself and use your mother effing eyeballs to talk hoopers to me, don't tag me. Don't ask Carl. Don't send Carl no DMs. Don't send Zig no DMs. Don't send Anthony no DMs. Don't talk to me. You don't know what you're talking about. The end. All right, all right, all right. Listen, all right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, all right. Oh my God. No. Listen, the no. MVP has no. spoken. No. The MVP I, has no. spoken. 
The no. MVP has spoken. No, hey, no, hey, cut hey, it I'm down. Gonna no. for next week, man. <laughs> hey, hey, no. hey, hold on. Hey, hold on. Wait. Paul, Paul, make your final comments as I wrap up. I'm going to save it for next week because, Anthony, you said enough for today. Paul, go ahead, sir. Hey, hey, hey first, and, first and foremost, congratulations to my brother, Ray Jaw, on that MVP title, baby. You know, got a lot, I got a lot of emotion right now, you know, buying the crib, moving, I'm back and forth. You know what I'm saying? So I had to make sure I touched down before the end of 2020 and, and, and show face for the winner's circle, baby. And I do want to add a couple of things to what you said because you write on the money in regards to Haskins. It's unfortunate that in our day and age, you got to be perfect when you're black. You know what I'm saying? There's no way around it. If you ain't perfect, they feed you to the wolves. What we've seen with Dwayne Haskins is not about even his play, bro. The reality is he's an easy target. And when you're an easy target in America, this is what they do. So it's unfortunate that a dysfunctional organization known as the Washington football team who couldn't even come up with a team name, hundreds of millions of dollars at stake and they can't even give you a name. You know what I'm saying? That's what we're dealing with. They tried to end that man's career. And it's unfortunate. In regards to Steph Curry, I'm with you 100%. Steph been balling. When, when the Dubs and the Splash Brothers was becoming a phenomenon, it was led by Steph Curry. So people could sit here and pretend, oh, Steph didn't lead a team. They didn't do X, Y, and Z. But the reality is the proof is in the pudding. The man metrics speak for itself. The wins, the growth, the development. The icon. I mean, he is royalties now with Under Armour, right? That shit don't happen by mistake. Because <laughs> they don't give black MVP. people royalties. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Unanimous is MVP. Yeah. So, and only other thing I want to throw out there. Mike, you my dog, if you're still on. You're still on. But don't, but don't ever mention yeah. LaMarcus Aldridge. And AD, oh my I, get, I get what you're trying to say. <laughs> I feel you on the ticky tack, you know, at the point in time. I feel you, bro. But as I'm walking through the floss, you know what I'm saying? And I pull up to these stop signs. I'm saying to myself, Mike, I can't let you do it. I'm not going to let 2021 be a bad take situation for you. I know Ann keep reliving it. Don't do it no more, bro. They are not in the same stratosphere. They never were. There's a reason why they got Dame in the lottery. Because L.A. wasn't that guy. You feel what I'm saying? He wasn't that man. Because um, if so, he was that man, you don't, get, you don't get a Dame in the lottery, bro. So, 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 Ray Job, I may have to ask you to come back because Mr. Box Office Travis is disagreeing with your comments. Um, he's basically saying, terrible take on Haskins. He was trash on the field, and he needs to grow up what on the field, plain and simple. What was the first thing that I said? I said the first thing I said was, he was not good. That was the first thing I said. Hold up, hold up, Trav. Trav, you're a football guy, right? Dwayne Haskins started 11 football games. He made more millions of dollars than he did starting football games. Two coaches, two GMs, three different offenses in 11 games. When has the NFL turned it back on a top 20 pick in 11 games? I watch people make excuse after excuse for Baker Mayfield, right? Baker balling now, but, hold oh, three coaches, three years, this, that, and the third. Come on, bro. Uh, all right. Uh, guys, I think that's it for us for today. Anthony, Plus, I know Travis is the squalifier. He, he, thinks, he thinks Cam Newton – he doesn't even think Cam Newton is the greatest thing his Panthers has ever had. He's disqualified um, from talking about black quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah, so, listen, Anthony, I know you're going to have a lot to say about Steph Curry because we know how you – Oh, Steph – what? He didn't have – what? <laughs> Already set the standard. We know more Steph Curry slander in 2021. Shut yeah, up. We're not talking to the. Yeah, that's Shut it. Up. Yeah, Ray, Ray, what? What was Ray, the Splash Brothers? Somebody didn't have. Ray, I, Ray, I will see you soon if you if you want me to set up that Steph Curry no. debate with Anthony. I will. I will see you for that. Um, Goat Mount Rushmore. Already, it's a win. Forty Rushmore. games. And Ray, you got to see you being slick. Forty games. 
Uh, again, happy early birthday to our MVP, Ray Jarvis. Ray, the reigning, defending MVP of the sports hit list. Thank you, guys. You guys have a happy new year. I'll see you in 2021. Um, NFL playoffs real coming soon. We're going to have some live post games for those. Some of you guys can pull up. I know Mike will be on those. But, Mike, you take care. Send my love to your family. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. This has been the Sports Hit List by the fans and for the fans for 2020. You guys take care. Thank you. Peace. You're, you're, you're listening to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network.